we are back at school. And little side note, not that it'll affect the pump, but this is going to kind of fuck me over a little bit, at least until I can get this shit working again. But guess who forgot to pay the water bill? Yikes. So I don't have any fucking water in my house. <laughs> so before I even went to, um, you know, after I got here, I kind of unloaded all my shit, my clothes, my stuff. Uh, I had to stop at Kroger and get like, you know, eight gallons. So that'll get turned off. I don't know. That'll get turned on. Hopefully at least tomorrow or so. More than a day, no running water. That's going to be a little bit of a hassle. Luckily enough, though, I live kind of right next to the college rec center. So I can really just go over there to do my business if I really need to. I'll just bring some shower shoes. <clears throat> but planned for tonight's lift at the cool and dark 1029 is back. So pull downs, rows, pullovers. And what else is there, you know? I will say this. I haven't really been doing too many bent over barbell rows. Uh, and there is a reason for that. It's not like I don't want to do heavy rows, because whenever I do machine rows or cable rows, they're still, you know, pretty heavy. But I've been chilling out of the bent-over barbell rows, because they're kind of a... Uh, I like the movement, but it's kind of a power draw. Real heavy bent-over barbell rows. I mean, I'm really destroying my back. Lats are getting blown up, traps mid kind of Terry's major looking whatever in-between muscles are going on in there but it's also really sapping a lot of energy from my lower back my erectors my glutes even my quads a little bit my hamstrings calves are probably coming into play just a touch you know, all these muscle groups that are coming into play which aren't the targeted muscle group they're sort of taxing me energy wise so after three sets of um you know maybe lap pulldowns or something. Even if the lap pulldown sets were really hard with assisted reps, even drop sets, after three sets of that, you know, I'm definitely going to be huffing and puffing, but I'm not going to be, like, exhausted. But after three sets of really heavy bent-over barbell rows, there's a pretty significant amount of oxygen debt, which I've got to repay myself by, you know, sitting there. <laughs> you know, You know what I'm saying? So that's sort of why I stay away from bent over barbell rows, at least for now. I'm sure they'll come back into the routine soon enough. You know, a lot of movements come in and out. I've gone through periods of time where I hated incline barbell. Not as a movement, but just like for me at the time, it just never really felt very good. Same thing with, um, well, yeah, I've always liked incline smith, but you know, sometimes movements feel good. You're in the zone on them. You can get a good squeeze, good pump, get a lot of good working sets with them. And then other times, they're just not your thing. So that's not a problem, but that is a situation which you've got to be able to understand. Like, okay, I don't love the feeling of this hammer curl. I think I'm going to switch to this preacher curl, right? Rather than, oh, this hammer curl doesn't feel good. Eh, I guess let's just stop working out. I think you know which situation is the one that um, I would lean towards as somebody who's trying to, you know, train hard and grow muscle. But hmm. plan for the post-workout meal. Uh, I've got like a two-pound pre-marinated tri-tip that I saw when I was getting groceries, which I thought looked pretty good. So that's sitting at. 127.5 degrees Fahrenheit for, I set the timer for like five hours. Uh, if you ever sous vide a steak, eh, you're usually good at about the hour mark. And then probably sear it just a touch. That'll be at least a protein source for the next few meals. Because I mean, the thing is fucking, actually I don't think it's two pounds, I think it was three. So three pounds, that's 300 grams of protein. That's not nothing. That is not nothing. For the most part, I kind of aim for around 50 per meal. That usually balances out to like, you know, eating five times a day, which I don't really get too specific with my meal timings. 
like it's not like every time I eat it's 200 grams of carbs 50 grams of protein 25 grams of fat you know I'm not really that specific about it I never really have been all I really try to do is make sure I do eat kind of an even distribution of calories throughout the day and then make sure I'm right where I want to be with the macro goals but this will actually be the first time I lifted this gym I've been in here before just to kind of check it out but this will be the first lift there's some pretty OG back machines here I guess we'll get into them but you don't need much you do not need much honestly I wouldn't be too upset doing a back day that like was just straight up pull-ups you know of course I'm not really gonna do that just for fun yeah, more of a machine kind of guy I can get a much better squeeze on a lat pull down than I can with just a straight up pull-up but the basics are where it's at man you know there's a reason why total nutcase power lifter strongmen uh, I can't just name drop any but you know the kind of dudes I'm talking about John Meadows style or John Meadows like type that sort of guy there's a reason why they love pull-ups and bench and compound movements and you know everything else the basics it's because they fucking work you know I think there's a what's the I want to phrase this right there's almost a a perversion almost like a I want to one-up the guy next to me in terms of my you know, exercise selection. Oh, you're doing a set of dumbbell curls? Are you squeezing at the top while supinating? Oh, how many seconds was your eccentric? Oh, you're not even counting? Ooh. I mean, I'm sure that situation has happened. Maybe not like... It's obviously not like that all the time. But what I'm trying to say is getting really detailed and trying to be really specific. Like, I'm gonna... I want to target my brachial radialis so I'm gonna do some uh, some scooby-doo curls ah, come on and I'm not trying to say that there's no point in getting specific with movements like that but usually when I see people like that they're kind of ahead of the game you know uh, what's gonna affect the beginner more right learning I was trying to think of a different sort of situation to kind of contrast lifting but what's going to benefit the beginner more teaching him like how to target his fucking uh his brachialis on his bicep with a really special kind of curl or you know having him just get good at going hard obviously with reasonable form but the dude who is getting pushed like dude come on you got like five more dude really push it right the guy who learns intensity first will always beat the guy who learned very niche specifics first. That may not be a cut and dry rule, but you get what I'm kind of trying to get at. So, let's, let's just go park. Considering the time, and it's a Sunday before the first day of school, I, I really think it's going to be empty in there. Sometimes I hope it's empty. In, uh, I guess, one more little chat, one more little topic before the lift actually starts. Sometimes I like a full gym, sometimes I like a dead gym. Uh, it's, I can't exactly tell you the reasons why, but you know, sometimes it's cool to be in your own head, just sit there totally in the zone, you're in your own world, there's nothing else around you to distract you, right? You're just killing it. But then it's cool when there's dudes around you too, because you can kind of feed off their energy. If I see a guy really pushing himself hard, I mean, in kind of a just a meathead guy kind of way I want to one-up him if somebody's pushing himself hard next to me I want to sh I want to show him I can do that too you know and I don't think that's a bad thing I think if you maybe take that comparison too far you might be asking for trouble you gotta remember comparison is the thief of joy in life but there's a competitive nature to this shit you know even though obviously it's you versus you you want to be better than you were yesterday. It is cool when you know that you're running with the pack. And you're not just sort of on the trailing end. Right? You're up there with the trailblazers. So, main takeaway. Go hard. Let's, uh, let's just get started.
I'm, I'm nice and spoiled. Jim is dead in here, so. I'm a little bit surprised the weights are empty. You know, it does not surprise me at all. All these cardio machines are empty. Now, I'm not trying to name names. Let's just leave it at that. But I warmed up, did some pullovers, did some rows, uh, just over on the cables, and then a couple of sets with half the stack. A little more, a little more, a little more. So now I'm ready to just throw the stack around. This stack isn't like, yeah, this isn't like an insanely heavy stack. I'd say a 300 pound lap pull down stack is pretty heavy. 250, that's like the stack of the Planet Fitness, even a little lighter. But either way, this will be the starting movement. Maybe a couple sets, maybe just one. We'll see how it feels. Few more. Let's put this down one notch. Whew. This one will be a drop set for sure. Maybe not the most aesthetically pleasing set to anybody who's like a diehard, you know, perfect form, slow, controlled rep kind of guy. But, dude, I love these heavy sets like this. Throwing the weight around. <laughs> I mean, it literally pumps me up, both mentally, 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 and physically. Eh. One more. wider grip on this drop set. That's enough of these pull downs. Let's jump onto this row machine right next to me. Now this one I'm very interested in because it looks fucking sick. Now this is the kind of machine that I like because the stack is fucking heavy. I'm not gonna sit here and whip the whole stack around. I'm gonna be a little more conservative. Instead of 240, 200. So yeah, this will be kind of a brutish set. I'm not really gonna go super slow and can trees, slooper slow and controlled and squeeze. I'm just trying to throw the weight around and do some damage for this first one. The next one might look totally different. 
Like controlled set for this next one. Let's just change grips. Okay. That feels pretty sweet. But I'm ready to move on to... Not sure what yet. Let's let's take a look around and decide in a moment. I think some pullovers should do nicely. Um, yeah, how about, I don't know, 37 pounds? That sounds about right. I think, yeah, I'll do kind of an alternating style. So five reps on the right side, five on the left, five on the right, five on the left, back and forth until, well, until both my lats are totally cooked. So nothing too complicated. The real difficult part is just kind of pushing through the burn, which I know it's so cliche to say, but I know that if you were to take a look around at your next you know, time in the gym, or maybe if you're in the gym right now, you see a lot of sets with just meh intensity. It's almost like people's goals is just to come to the gym, do 10 reps, and then move on to a different piece of equipment instead of really getting after it. But that's, um, that's not what we're doing here. So let's just hit this shit. Okay. <sighs> 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 Honestly, I think just one more fucking set. I want to make it a little bit of a super set, but uh, let's uh, let's just get it going and finish this shit off. I'm thinking set of pull downs, followed by a set of rows, no break in between. That's the whole point of a, uh, a super set. And then after this, I'll turn off some of these lights and find somewhere cool to pose down. So last set, uh, <coughs> obviously you want all your sets to be good, right? That makes pretty much, 
as much sense as anything. But last set, don't take your foot off the gas just because you're almost done. That's fucking foolish. And with that, I'd say back is pretty cooked. Oh, since there's nobody in here and I can just jump from machine to machine to machine, this is a relatively fast paced workout for me. But let's put the straps away, hit a couple lat spreads. Okay, lighting adjusted, back pumped, pump cover off. Pump cover being removed. Come on. Oh, my goodness. So, was that that complicated? Was that really that fancy of a lift? I mean, what was it? If you really boil it down, it was just a couple different kinds of... Well, not even a couple different kinds. All I did was one kind of row, one kind of pull down. I did some pullovers, too. And then I just kind of did a jumble of those. That's what I usually say back is. Whenever I roll up to the gym for back, I'm like, what are we gonna do? Well, I don't know, some pull downs, some rows, some pullovers. As long as you've got a pump at the end of it and you did some hard, hopefully heavy sets, at least for a few. Then I say you're golden. But let's uh let's hit a couple of these. Woo. I mean, you tell me, is that a pair of pumped up lats or what? <laughs> I'd go so far as to say that they fucking are. So this is what I always get in trouble for. I always say this is the rhomboids when really it's the Terry's major. What are you, a fucking kinesiology student? Come on, it's your back. Right, make it look cool. Don't think about it too hard. <sighs> so that's really all there is, posing wise. Back is pretty simple. Just. Lat spread and double by from the front and the back. Okay, wait, no, I lied. There's a, there's a few where you can sort of pop your lats out. But other than that, nothing else to see. So let's just get in the car and get out of here. I'm fucking tired. And I need to be well rested for my first day of class tomorrow. And that concludes the day, basically. Still got some food to eat, but the hard part's done. Eh, well, maybe not the hard part. More like the fun part, if we're being honest. But I am, uh, eh, I might bounce around here. There's a couple of gyms on the rotation. Uh, I'm sure you've noticed all of these lifts are not at the same gym every time. And that's kind of on purpose, you know. I I think, I don't know, maybe I've just got ADHD brain and I like going different places. But I prefer to sort of think about it like, yeah, different gyms just have different vibes. They got different, well, 
different people, different machines, the environment's just pretty different. So if I've got the option to, you know, go to kind of a totally dead gym like that, or, you know, kind of a 24 hour gym a little bit further away or the normal rec center, or maybe like an anytime or like a planet fitness, then I kind of like bouncing around, you know? So today, today was a good back day. I can say that with certainty. One thing though, my left lat felt a little funky. Like I kind of had a little bit of a tightness. Not like a injury level thing, but I don't know. I um, I got a massage gun. I'm gonna start trying to use that. I should get a roller too. If you're curious about what kind of uh, what kind of maintenance and upkeep this incredibly massive build gets, I have not been on top of it. I mean, I feel good, but I will say for sure. My flexibility and just sort of maybe what you call elasticity of my muscles, it's probably suffering. You know, getting some deep tissue like butter knife, oiled up massage level shit. I'm, if you've seen like the bodybuilder videos of where they get deep tissue like that, it does not look fun. But, I mean, more likely than not, if some kind of, you know, licensed dude really just grinds my lats into bits then I'm relatively sure my lat spread is going to be wider because a lot of the kind of intramuscular sort of not knots it's not like your muscle ties itself up but it can get kind of well it can kind of get a little bit knotty uh, if you get what I'm saying there so breaking that kind of stuff up I should be doing it so in terms of my back I don't think I can really get back there other than just like maybe a normal foam roller or the crossbow. <sighs> huh. But my front side, you know, chest, thighs, legs. Well, that's, I mean, I guess that's pretty much it. I can get at that with the, uh, the massage gun. So I'll keep you updated on whether or not I feel like that's doing anything. I'm sure it'll probably do something for sure. But tomorrow's going to be arm day. You know, I'll admit, or not admit, but today was not as full and big as I should be. Uh, I took a while driving and packing up all my shit and walking around. I was a little bit behind on my meals. I woke up at 2.50. Ugh, not good. Not good. Like I was saying last time, if you take a day and you don't really hit your macros, and let's say you've been really good at uh, whatever your bulking diet is, if you've been hitting 3,000 calories on the dot on the regular... Then that one day you skip it, dude, you're going to drop it a pound instantly. Maybe two pounds. If you're really carved up and full of water and hydrated, and you go one day without really drinking that much or eating that much, you could drop five pounds. Now, of course, that's not actually, you know, contractile tissue. That's not muscle. That's just disappearing into the ethos. But it is, you know, intramuscular water and carbs, which in terms of muscle recovery, and honestly, I'd say maybe not strength performance, but pump performance. Being a little bit more carb depleted and dehydrated, you are going to feel it for sure. So that was not my craziest back pump ever. And not due to, um, uh, <sighs> not due to like incorrect exercise selection or, you know, lack of intensity. Really, just because I did not eat enough fucking food today, like a total fool. So maybe, um, maybe I should start adding the macros that I had, because these videos are posted on a day delay. Like I'm gonna post this one tomorrow, so maybe I should add the macros into the um, into the description that I hit. And if I ever have a day where I'm fucking, you know, not living the life as a bodybuilder, instead of hitting my five thousand calories. Let's say I was extra busy and I was not responsible enough to prep some meals. I only had 2,000 calories. I don't want you guys to fucking rip into me in the comments. But who knows, we'll see. I've kind of got a little bit of a habit of saying I'm going to add shit to these videos. But then... <laughs> it just never happens. But whatever. Nothing wrong with keeping it simple. That's how I see it at least. So, For those curious... I did not drop out of school 
didn't, I'm not a dropout, not yet at least. Uh, my school just has a very late start to the spring semester, so I've got an extra long uh, winter break. I haven't been in, uh, I haven't had actual class since, holy shit. I don't know, you probably couldn't see that deer just sitting there right in the left lane. Not moving at all, just fucking dead-eyed. Goodness. But, uh, yeah, so I haven't been to class for like a month and a half. So, good for me. You know, any, uh, I don't know about schools across the country, but any, like, OSU characters or Cincinnati dudes, you guys have been in school for like two weeks already. So, I'm not particularly jealous of you. But don't worry, I didn't just sit around all break. I had a, I had a winter class that I had to take. So, either way... Either freaking away. If you're, uh, so if that's you, if you're a student of some kind, whatever you freaking do, do not let your academics prevent you from getting a solid lift in. And that does not mean don't study and don't do your homework and fucking, you know, get shitty grades. All I'm really trying to say is, you know, instead of going out and doing whatever, Maybe be a little bit more responsible with your time. Because you've only got so much of it. And sure, you could spend it just having fun. Just chilling. But I mean, you don't really get anything out of that. You know? uh, maybe it's just because I've never done it. Or never really been into it. And I just I can't see what they're seeing. But on my drive to you know, the gym or fucking wherever... When I see a darty and there's like fucking a hundred people crammed into one front lawn and everybody's just jumping around, <laughs> let's just say I've never been jealous, you know, so don't, uh, this, I'm kind of taking a bit of a turn with this postcard talk, but don't get FOMO. You got to remember, people are going to have FOMO in the future of the fact that they didn't hit the gym and have a sick ass build. Right. But then again, you know, you don't have to be a total monk, right? There is a lift-life balance. It's not like everybody is a fucking obsessed nutcase. So, in my eyes, I would hope you're getting your good lifts in on a very consistent basis. <clears throat> but then again, that's just because I want to live in a world of freaks and you know, dudes who are just fucking throwing a crap ton of weight around in the gym. So, that's my, that's my end goal for the world. Sam Sulik for president. Initial phase, there's going to be some changes in terms of the uh, activity level of the United States citizen population. And I could say that with certainty. So, I think that's all I got. I, uh, man... I gotta totally get into like a different sort of mindset. I have been in a, well not even mindset, but just schedule. I've been in a wake up at noon, do all my normal shit. Because the class was asynchronous over this whole time, so I can do it whenever I want. Uh, so my, I need to do a whole reset of my sleep schedule. It's like I just came off of a red eye, even though I didn't even change time zones. I, uh, I was just irresponsible. So the plan is to probably Eh, maybe get a pound, three-quarter pound of that steak down, plus, uh, I don't know. I had ramen this morning. I don't know if I want to have ramen again. I've got some instant rice. Yeah, that'll be good. <laughs> so, I think last meal of the night, steak, some instant broccoli cheddar rice, the rest of this Snapple apple that I've been sipping on for the workout all my vitamins and then I should just pass out like a baby like a freaking baby that's all I got man do your cardio lift hard eat hard sleep hard stay hard not I said be hard last time if you've ever seen that clip that was a total misquote of 
our uh, our main man David Goggins. He does not. No. Stay hard. Right. I will freaking see you next time, fool.